And hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cyrus Webb Presents here on Amazon Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. If you guys are new to us on the Amazon platform, welcome. Make sure you guys do hit that follow button so you can stay connected with all of our programming. You'll see it either here in this corner or down below. You also so will see some of the offerings from our next guest. We're excited to welcome back my friend Omega Keys to our broadcast. You guys know her as a best-selling author. She's an actress. She's a filmmaker, and she's celebrating a great film that's here on Amazon, among others, called Fractured. We have it highlighted for you guys in the carousel here on Amazon. Make sure you guys rent or buy it for yourself. I bought it, and believe me, you probably will want to, too, because you're going to want to watch it more than once to make sure you guys get all the little nuggets that are in there. We're going to talk to Amiga not only about the success of Fracture, but what it's been like for her as a filmmaker to show other people what's possible and also let you guys know what's coming up for her as well. Omega, my friend, always a pleasure. Glad to have you back. So excited to be back. I feel like I just left. <laughs> I, you look, that's what I like. That's how it should feel around here. It should feel, it should feel like I'm Omega. A lot for us to talk about when it comes to fracture. And you have a lot already going on for 2024. We were just talking about how on other platforms, how well your other films are doing. Talk to us about this experience, Omega. What it's been like for you to start this year, not only with the success of Fracture, but also seeing the new life that's been brought into other projects as well. It has been crazy. And, you know, it's been a buildup because I, I keep saying, like, you know, each project is going to make the next one go. Mm -hmm. And this year, I don't think I've had a chance to catch my breath yet because it's just like the train is rolling, 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 rolling. Like we came into 2024 with projects already dropping on platforms. Yeah. So that was a great start. And, you know, gearing up to film what's next. So it's like we're in a constant state of moving, moving, moving. It's It's been insane. <laughs> I mean, you are in, you know, I know we don't, neither one of us get enough time or take enough time. I know I don't take enough time to really think about the magnitude of what we do, right? Because for us, it's just what we do. But when I've been right. seeing the posts, especially on social media for you, seeing the success of Keeping Secrets, the director's cut that you dropped, and seeing the way that people are showing it so much love, it has to feel good. That's something that you created, something you invested so much of your time and self into is being so well received. Talk to us about that experience to go from going on platforms and watching other projects to now having your own projects on those platforms. I mean, it's crazy because I started on Man, I think my first film was on Amazon. It dropped at the beginning, of, at the, either at the end of 2016 or the beginning of 2017, one of those. So I've been on Amazon for a while, but to be one of those people who survived all the changes that Amazon has implemented, yeah. that's what I look at and I'm like, wow, like I'm still there mm -hmm. because they did a clean sweep mm -hmm. at one point. And all of my films survived a sweep and they're still being accepted. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that they can't get their films on there nowadays. Yeah. So to be an independent artist and my films are being added to Amazon, you know, still, and they're still doing well and they're doing amazing on other platforms. When I look sometimes on the carousel, let me say um, Fracture was uh, recommended. Um, someone else was watching and they pulled up Fracture. Fracture was recommended to them on their list. Do you yeah. know how excited I was? Because my films have never been on the recommendation um, row. So that lets me know this film is doing very, very, very well to be on that, you know, that that front row yeah. for recommended new movies that have come out. And, right. you know, and it was up there with, you know, we, the funny part is they were actually looking for a, a Jason Statham movie that the beekeeper. Wow. Okay. Yeah. They were looking for that movie and my movie was next to it. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it goes back to the big thing about you, Amiga, and that is always being willing to do the work. You have always been that person who's been willing to do the work. And I have to add to do quality work. Because like you said, 
in order to survive the changes, I mean, the work has to be there. The, the you know, the, the certain level of excellence has to be there and not just doing something, but actually putting so much into it. Did you know that was going to be key for you, especially as a filmmaker? I mean, like I said, you know, you're no stranger to Amazon anyway, because being a, a bestseller there, you know, with your books. But did you know going in that in order to be seen, in order to have that staying power, that you had to be able to put your best self for it? Oh, absolutely. I went into it knowing full well that that's what I had to be. You know, I, I knew that with each film, I had to get better. I had to improve, you know. The storylines have always been there. That's not been a, that hasn't been a problem for me. But right. the filming side, you know, having the quality, you know, there's so much that goes into filming these films from the set design um to not just the actors, it's the set design, it's the camera angles, it's so much I knew that I was going to with each film increase the quality, increase the quality, you know, to stay competitive increase the quality, you know, for myself, push myself to the limit. Yes. Yes. I have a DP uh, on my sets, but he and I both run camera. We run two cameras. Yeah. So even pushing myself as a director and holding the camera, it, that's just crazy. Right. Yeah. Right. But I knew that's what I had to do. And I have fully prepared myself, um, myself and the team for these challenges that you need. It's funny that you say that because <laughs> right before um, we got on this call, of course, Kathy and I were going back and forth um, because we're we're finalizing the locations for our next project. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's coming down to there's a location. It has the perfect look, but does it fit within our budget? And if it does fit within our budget, you know, as indie filmmakers, is it still worth it? And it came down to me saying yes, because of the production value. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Marion, hello to you on the Facebook side. Good to see you. See you guys also over there on YouTube and X as well. I should mention, I didn't say it. We are on <laughs> primarily on Amazon, but we are simulcasting. So hello to you guys joining us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and on X. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments for Amiga as we're going throughout our segment today, feel free to be able to put those in the chat. But if you guys are not joining us on Amazon, though, you will see a link that will bring you over to Amazon to be able to get, uh, of course, any of the films that we're talking about. There you'll see Fractured, the main one we're talking about today. You'll see Faded Reunion is there. I'm going to highlight for you guys uh, in the carousel there. You also will see the documentary Surviving America. You'll see it there too, as well as Keeping Secrets. You'll see it there as well. Now, I want to talk about, uh, you see Amiga wearing her Keeping Secrets <laughs> shirt there. Keeping Secrets also, even though we haven't been talking about it much this year, has been getting a whole lot of attention this year. Talk to us about that. For those who are just finding out about Keeping Secrets, Omega, talk to them a little bit about that film. Um, well, because I released, at the same time I released Fractured, I released Keeping Secrets, the director's cut, which, you know, it's a re-edited version of, you know, Keeping Secrets, because I knew that, you know, with certain movies and certain films, the first, Keeping Secrets, the original, is well over a two hour movie. I knew that yeah. if I cut it back to 90 minutes, it will reach a different audience. I just oh. did not know that it would reach that audience this fast. It literally dropped on another platform on Friday night and it has <laughs> yeah. skyrocketed yeah. off. And so that I want people to know about this too before we dive into Fractured. Omega's not just doing one type of film. Like she, I mean, she has the film I mentioned earlier, Faded Reunion. Um, that's more of a, I mean, I'm bad with it's categorizing. Romantic it, okay, romantic. Okay, I wanted to say that, but I, I mean, I'm always careful about because you know it. It is, you know, what else I like about that film, even though it, you know it, it kind of fits in that romantic comedy vibe. It also is about you know individuals being able to realize that sometimes differences, you know, bring people together. Uh, yeah. But also, of course, being being able to walk in your own truth too. That's that's a very big part, especially the bombshell that happens <laughs> in yeah. that film. Uh, so, you know, so that you know, big so that's a, yeah. yeah, so that's a huge thing too. And then you come to fractured, which is such a, I would say it's dark. Um, well, parts of it are dark, 
But it also, yeah. there's so many different puzzle pieces. I want to talk about what that was like for you in getting ready to release Fractured Omega. Because before uh, Fractured, of course, you had released Faded Reunion, had a great response with that. What was it like for you kind of switching gears and getting ready for Fractured? Well, I filmed Keeping Secrets next. So okay. it was an easy transition coming from Keeping Secrets to Fractured. Got you, got you. Yeah, it, that was an easy transition because Keeping Secrets is also a thriller, but it's like a thriller slash horror. It yeah. leans, you know, heavier on that, you know, crime drama. Right. Um, It leans on that. So it was actually easier to film Fractured because of that. Got you. And, and another I was thing, I'm, so I'm sorry. Prepared. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Amanda. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I was so prepared because Fractured... I mean, Fracture was a smaller cast than Keeping Secrets, you know? Gotcha. So it was easier. What I was going to say about cast, I'm so glad that's a great segue. Because one thing about Omega, well, we, we share a lot. But one thing we both share is our loyalty. And what I love is being able to see some of the cast members that you've been able to work with, some of the actors and actresses, Omega, bring to life different type of roles in these films because some of them we may have seen in Faded Reunion that we see in Keeping Secrets that we see in Fractured and to see them bring to life those different types of characters. I'm thinking in particular, um, I don't want to give anything away, but um, yeah. in, well, you you know what I'm talking about. From one of the characters that's in Faded Reunion that is all chipper and and you know and kind of snotty, uh, in yeah. in that film, and then see her being someone more of a villainous type in Fractured. Uh, and I love seeing that dynamic. What was that like for you to see how they have been able to go with you from each project? Well, you're talking about Marion, so <laughs> <laughs> because you know, Mar Marion has been my ride or die. Um, she's one of the first people that believed in me when it came to. Um, <laughs> Uh, my film um, writing journey. She's one of the first people, you know, of course, Greg was the very first person that told me to be a director. Um, but after that, it was Marion. So, you know, hearing it from Greg and then Marion saying it when we were working on Hunger Games, um, Mockingjay, yeah. <laughs> we were working on that together and and I was writing and Marion was like, you know, I believe you can direct. And you know, hey, that was the second person that told it. I actually believed her. And so when I come up with these characters, I have a great time when I'm writing. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to just give this to Marion. Because <laughs> yeah. when I start writing, yeah. I automatically hear her voice. Got you. Got you. So I know, I know which characters, they, they kind of take over. Any Anytime I'm writing, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, this character is kind of... Uh, Marion's voice to pop in. Wow. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I tell her, and she she just goes for it. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, on Faded Reunion, she was so worried. She was so worried because, you know, that character, you know, Faded Reunion has been out for a couple of years. So, okay, let's yeah. just face it. You know, this is the real world. That, ca that character is kind of racist. Yeah. So she had a, uh, you know, she had a hard time at first, you know, I'm like, I, I just really want you to do it. She's like, yeah, how do you want me to do it, though? <laughs> <laughs> right. So she always, you know, we always discuss the development of it. And of course, she always adds her ex. She always, I give the character some backstory and she gives it a real backstory. Wow. And, you know, and that's how she runs it. And she works with that, you know, what motivates these characters. But, you know, no matter big or small, she pulls them off and she is a scene stiller. Well, well, Marion says uh, I resemble that remark. Yeah, I was talking about <laughs> you. I, I didn't want to say. <laughs> yes. Well, look, it is it's such a pleasure to watch. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, welcome. You all are watching Cyrus Square Presents here on Amazon. Uh, if you guys have not seen any of the films by my guest Omega Keys, feel free to be able to click them either in this corner or down below. We're talking about now Fractured. Before we get into it, I'm going to let them watch the the trailer, uh, Omega. Uh, and okay. they, of course, they can watch it here on Amazon. And then we're going to talk about it uh, on the other side. Go ahead and get it uh, prepped up here. Ooh. 
Woohoo! So you're just going to sit here and ignore me? Oh, so we're sharing today. That's why I pay you to be here. Do you? <laughs> Fine, I'll play along. So how did we end up here this time? Now that I have your attention, I'm your sister, your twin. It's been several weeks and you haven't heard from her? No. And she has a name. I'm Olivia. You need to set boundaries. And when she doesn't comply, there needs to be consequences. That's funny. Hey, listen, babe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, you gonna be in here all day? What are you so worried about? Me? Hey, by the way, the police came by here yesterday. I'm gonna get him once and for all. Keep doing what you're doing. This is progress. <laughs> oh, well, time to get on with it. Cutting things a bit close. All right. So there's a lot in there. <laughs> so first of all, before we dive into this, uh, and you're going to have Fractured highlighted right now on the carousel for you guys to be able to rent or buy it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Where did the idea broadly come from Omega for Fractured? Well, um, Fractured deals a lot with mental health. And I, growing up, I watched one of my um, relatives, my aunt, one of my favorite aunts, struggle with um, mental health. And I've also, you know, from being in the military, you know, certain things, you know, dealing with anxiety and PTSD and how to cope with that. And, you know, and basically what happens if you don't cope with it? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. And the, and the main character there that we saw in the trailer, Ava, she really is juggling a lot, as you just talked about dealing with PTSD, dealing with being successful at home, being successful in the workplace, uh, and then dealing with family, right, as we're able to see in the trailer as well. Um, that character, um, and shout out to uh, Tanisha Lynn, we had a great conversation, me and I did, uh, on the radio side of this. You guys can actually be able to listen to it on Amazon Music if you guys go to Conversations Live there. What I loved about that character is that it really is someone who's so relatable. Is that one of the things you've been hearing, Omega, about the film and about that character? Yeah, it's so crazy. So many people are saying that they find themselves, you know, in Ava, where they're having to be the strong, be strong, 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 no matter what's going on and not right. having um, those moments. Because a lot of times, even with myself, um, you, we could be going through stuff and then people be like, oh, you got it. You'll be all right. You're good. And I'm like, no, I'm literally telling you that I'm not good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> and people will be like, oh, you'll be OK. Just wanting you to move past it or wanting you to take care of everyone else. Mm. Yeah. In the meantime, so Ava's trying to balance her job. She's trying to, you know, be the loving, happy wife at the same time. So, you know, juggling those things, you know, something's going to give. Right. Right. And there's also the idea of, of, of stigma, too. Uh, and I thought about it um, when I was writing my review, Omega, that there is the, one of the reasons why people don't talk about past trauma and past hurt is the stigma that's attached to it, the shame for some people, yeah. but also being judged. Um, mm -hmm. Did that come to play also when you were kind of crafting this story? Oh, absolutely. Because there's things in my past that it took me years to say, you know, even when I had the proof living, breathing, walking, it took me years to even admit, you know, happened, you know, to myself and that that stigma, because, you know, once, once, once you put it out there, you have to face it. Yeah. And everybody is not going to be like, oh, poor you or whatever there, you know, some people tear you up for your past. Yeah. And, you know, and, and with this film, we're dealing with, um, with human trafficking. And uh, with that, people, you know, sometimes they victim blame. And, right. and Atlanta is a huge hub for that. And, I, and you know, you see young girls and adults will look at those young girls and be like, oh, she's just out there. She's just wild and stripping away the young girl of it. She's a victim. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a stigma. And I, and I and love it. 
Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was like, I was going to say, and also the reality is black women are always believed. And, and I think that that's the other, other thing about this film is that as we're able to get, for those who haven't seen it, you kind of get some cutaways as the film goes through a flashbacks of Ava's experience, right? And I, yeah. and I think that is so important because it reminds us that a lot of times the person we see in front of us that looks okay is either dealt with a lot or still dealing with a lot, still caring a lot. And that's, you and I have talked about this, Amiga. One of the things said in the film is that you can't have it all, all together all the time. It's not, it's, it's not fair for others to expect it, but it's also not fair for you to expect it of yourself. So I want to ask you, how important has that been for yourself to make sure you're giving yourself some grace? Um, actually, writing this story was me freeing myself um, to allow myself that I can't be there for everybody. I'm going to I'm going to say no. I'm going to step away. I'm going to take time for me. Now, me taking time for me may not look like everybody else's time, right. but that is right. time for me. <laughs> right. Right. And you know, and I have been telling people no a lot more. No, I can't help you. No, I can't do that. I, and no, I'm not just because I say I'm I have a moment of time. That's my time. I'm not giving it to you. Right. And I think that you know, look, I've I've gotten really good at that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my mom would say too good, but I've, I've I've gotten really good at that because you have to set those boundaries. And when you don't, that's when you know when you don't protect yourself. That's when, of course, we see bad things can happen. So I want to step back mm -hmm. for a second. I don't like labels, but you are a a filmmaker. You are a female filmmaker. You are a black female filmmaker. Um, do you feel like, especially because it is such a, a a small community, I'll put it that way, that you're able to do two things, Amiga. One, to show other black female filmmakers what's possible, but two, to be able to encourage others that are in that space too. Oh, that's like one of my goals right there. That's why I share a lot of my journey on social media. So other people that look like me can know that they too can do it. Because when I was coming up, I would have got started in the film. If I would have known that I could, I would have got started in the film industry a long time ago. There wouldn't be Omega Keys, the veteran. I would have known I could have went straight into the film industry. Interesting. I love yeah. that. And that's, you know, it, it, that's interesting to think about, though, because how different your life would have been, right? Yeah. Uh, you said something in an interview we did recently, and I wanted to talk about that because I thought about it after you said it. And you were saying that you don't you don't really consider yourself an actress, even though we've seen you in projects. <laughs> we've seen you acting. <laughs> Is it because that's not where you feel like your biggest passion is or, or was it more of a bridge for you to get to where you are now? I mean, it's, it's a bridge and um, actually being on camera, you know, is a lot. I can get on here and play around, you know, all day, but, you know, actually embodying a, 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 a character and becoming that because my brain holds so much information at one, yeah. at, at one time I have to do the acting at, in spurts. Because <laughs> my brain is too busy, like trying to be the other, you know, creative and doing yeah. so much stuff. But I mean, I just never wanted to be the um, the person on camera. I've always wanted to be the person I'm creating. I never wanted to be Michael Jordan. I wanted to be the owner. Got you. I get it. Well, we have part of your support system joining us. Hello to you, Dexter. Good to be able to see you uh, as well. Let's talk about that because you, you've you been very public about having the support that you have. Uh, and glad to see uh, Dexter being able to join us live. What has that been like for you to know that you have the support system there rooting for you, but also encouraging you? Um, well, it's a huge thing because when you first met me, I was I was married to someone else and I didn't have that support. And it was a fight. It was a struggle every time. It made everything that I did that much harder to have to, you know, go to a book event and then come home and have to fight with someone because yeah. I took too much time away, you know, stuff like that. No, Dexter, you know, my husband 
from day one, when he knew that I was an author, the man went and bought my books and read my books. When we, one of our first dates were at a film set because wow. I was filming. He pulled up and I showed him around the set and, you know, this is what I do. If you can deal with this or you can't. And, you know, him, he grinning. And yeah. <laughs> he's like, wow, that's, that's what he likes, you know. Yeah. He doesn't limit me in any way. You know, when I bring up some things that I want to do, he like, you know, he feels like, oh, if you feel like you can get it done, I know you can. Wow. Amazing. When me and Kathy, me and Kathy stay on the phone um, business for hours on end. He's surprised when I'm not on the phone with her handling business more so than he is with me being on the phone with her. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. It's, it's Love that. Amazing. It pushes me. And we that's important. That support system is so important. Dante, hello to you. Gonna be able to see you over on the Facebook side as well. Again, see you guys over there on X and YouTube as well. If you guys have any questions or comments for Amiga as we wrap up here, feel free to be able to put those in the chat. Also, appreciate the hearts over there on the Amazon side. Again, uh, we're talking mainly now about Fracture, but you will see some of the other projects by Omega there in the carousel. So feel free to be able to look through those as well. So Omega, we've been talking about your body of work that's here on Amazon, but you already, as you alluded to, are already working on the next thing. What should we be expecting from, from you next? Um, next month, we start filming Ancestry, which is a, a full out horror. Wow. You know, I've been I've been tapping my toes on it, but it's a it's a different it, it's not different for me. It'll be different for other people okay. um, with the type of, you know, horror. You know, it's a you know, so I, I throw social consciousness in a lot of my work. So it's it's on that. But it is def, it's a horror, of course, with the message. And then later on in a year, we will be filming donors, the series. So. We have a lot. Um, 2024 is very heavy. I'm thankful that I get to bring a lot of my um, team and people that have been with me from the beginning because, you know, Dante joined, you know, he's Detective Hastings and um, Keeping Secrets. He was Dante Perez in um, Faded Reunion, and he yeah. will be back at, for Ancestry. So, yeah. and donors as well. But yeah, but those people, having those great people it's amazing. <laughs> that's gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, Dante says we move it all the way up. So, it, so I want to ask you because you know I'm not big on on scary stuff. Is this PG thirteen horror or is this rated R horror? <laughs> PG thirteen horror. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> that that I can watch. I can I can watch PG thirteen secrets. Yeah, yeah. We can so, handle this. Okay, so okay, this. so it's along that. It. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah, yeah Let's we're in that it. line. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, good. Well, remember it's me behind the camera. You got it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Be thinking about you when I'm watching it. I think about what's in front of me, and if look, and if I'm eating it, this right. <laughs> right here. But a lot for us to look forward to. Again, everyone, Omega Keys has been our guest. Omega, always a pleasure catching up with you. How can our viewers stay connected with you? Hey, you can follow AFM. Media 1922 um, on Instagram or AF about face media, sorry, on Facebook <laughs> or or Mimi Keys on the socials as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, definitely looking forward to our next conversation together, Omega. All right. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And we thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to another great segment of Cyrus Webb Presents. Until next time, I'm Cyrus Webb saying thank you so much for being with us. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.